Amazon, The Last Call. Two rooms, yes. Thank you. Ciao. Well, I've just taken two rooms right in the heart of the jungle marshes. This is possible in Brazil. With money, time, and a certain sense of adventure, one can get close to nature. A few businessmen have found El Dorado. They look for it in the luggage, in the backpacks of those travelers that come to the Amazonia, to the marshes, to the natural beauty of Brazil. We hope this El Dorado will not be impoverished as have others, and we hope that the conservation and intelligent use of this nature will permit us to continue enjoying the beauty of, among other animals, the tuyuyuy. One out of eight tourists who visit the Pantanal is Brazilian. The rest of the tourists who come to this privileged place in the states of Mato Grosso and Mato Grosso do Sul is a foreigner. This data is not only a reflection of the economic situation of the 170 million Brazilians, it is also a reflection of their unawareness as a people of the natural wealth of their own country. Is the Brazilian natural wealth better evaluated outside of its own frontiers? These birds are called cabezas secas, or dry heads, waders that prefer living in community and are within everyone's reach. But they need the laws that protect them to be efficient and reasonable. Massive tourism can destroy the tranquility they need to reproduce, and then the curtain will be permanently drawn on their performance. On today's program, we're going to show you specimens of nature that are willing to welcome guests, but moderately, regulated by a necessary and profitable conservation. Brazil has an income of $40 million based on international tourism that comes to enjoy scenes such as this one. But the South American giant still has things to learn from smaller countries that have a better knowledge of how to manage their natural potential. Costa Rica is 98 times smaller than Brazil, but receives $600 million a year, exactly 93% more profits than Brazil, and without damaging their natural resources. The Brazilian popes of ecological tourism still have a lot to learn. Brazil has 61 specimens of primates, quite a record, and each year a new species is discovered. Half of the planet's life forms are found between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, and as we can see, not only within the tropical forests. It is also found in less known ecosystems such as the Cerrado, the Caatinga, or the Atlantic Mata. Animal life is found throughout all of the Brazilian landscape, and we can enjoy their sight without bothering them in the 21 national parks and 12 federal biological reserves that protect their habitats. Eleven million protected hectares that may seem like a lot, but are really just a little over one percent of the Brazilian territory. Natural areas in which each living being is a musical note, without which the scale is incomplete, and the melody is simply impossible.
It's difficult to compose any kind of serenade without the notes do, re, or fa. And these animals lean on each other so that the natural world is in tune, so that it sounds good. The loss of a plant species marks the extinction of 30 insect species that live associated with it. The variety of garments that this praying mantis uses is closely bound to the vitality of the plant life around it. Fashion is set by the hole in the Brazilian territory, and all that we see is the fruit of millions of years on the catwalk. Life around here is perfect, but fragile. The land which feeds the enormous trees that attract our attention is made of minute organisms that work for us day and night. Nobody freelances here. This is teamwork that gives out equal dividends at the end of the year. Up or down, there is always someone working for you. One million four hundred thousand species of living organisms have been catalogued in the world. Just five percent of those that is estimated to actually inhabit our planet and that are still unclassified. Brazil holds first place, amassing the largest number of different animal and plant species, followed by Colombia, Mexico and Indonesia. We were familiar with the existence of solitary spiders, weavers of personal and non-transferable traps. But until we stepped on Brazilian soil, we were unfamiliar with other types of arachnid life. Spiders here hunt in groups. This poor ant is the victim of a social life as organized as its own. Another solitary insectivorous hunter does the same. The web has been weaved among all of them and they now equally share their takes. While these eight-legged predators hunt in a group, a black golden hand sagui, an unusual primate keen on large insects, finishes a grasshopper off. A large amount of biomass is active in the different Brazilian habitats, and those that eat today may be eaten tomorrow, a golden rule in the game of life. If it's your desire to spend a few days immersed in the scenario that we have just described, you can do so. And you can also shower at night and dine with candles in the middle of the jungle. More and more hotels are making interesting offers that are at the same time respectful of the environment. It costs $80 to spend the night in this Igarapé, in this hotel, close to the city of Manaus. In spite of the beauty of this fertile land, and of being only five hours away by plane from Miami, for example, the American ecotourists are still untempted by the innovative offers of the Brazil environmental tourism. There are only 17 hotels in what is the largest expanse of virgin jungle in the world, five million square kilometers. These hotels are in the midst of nature and almost all of them were inaugurated just over the last few years. The natural surroundings are tempting, but the animals that call our attention will undoubtedly disappear under compulsive and massive tourism. For the time being, these Jabutitinga tortoises shamelessly exhibit themselves before the visitors who enter this river in the Acre region. They come together by the hundreds during their period of reproduction, and this is precisely that period. In Venezuela, they are called morrocoyes. The aroused males seek the females out by their scent, The 
turtles that live in the Shapuri River are particularly large. The shell of some of the males can be 82 centimeters long, and they can weigh up to 55 kilograms. In spite of the size of their lovers, the female jabutis drag these sexual athletes by their penises as if it cost them no effort at all. Things calm down after the orgy, and the fertile females spawn from 10 to 20 eggs in a nest that has been dug into the jungle mire. The little heads of the offspring, fruit of that afternoon of orgy, will peep out, perhaps to find themselves in front of the camera of a tourist who is visiting the Brazilian National Park. That would be a positive thing if the end result is a greater amount of protection for themselves and their offspring. <laughs>